It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I'm your host this morning. I'm glad to be with you. We had a... uh, A long weekend off with the um, Thanksgiving holiday, and uh, for those of you that have inquired, we are, um, my my wife is doing much better, and uh, she's on a regimen of antibiotics, and things are moving along. So um, we're going to cover a a, a group of topics this morning that are um, of importance, and then there's a couple of uh, house cleaning things I want to kind of touch on. Uh, The battery station is doing their annual troop drive. We're going to talk a little bit about that and what you can do to help and assist. Um, They basically do this drive every year to assist uh, our our troops over in Afghanistan. And out of their pocket, they pay the shipping for uh, and and donate literally thousands of dollars every year out of their pocket to assist our troops overseas. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment. Our four topics today, Obamacare, opt out. Ladies and gentlemen, we can shut Obamacare down ourselves by simply getting onto the website and making it crash. And I strongly encourage you to do so. Do not sign up, but make sure that you parade around the site and you click and click and click and click at every opportunity that you have just to bollocks up the works. Because I'm telling you right now, Obamacare is nothing but a tracking program for your data and your information. They're building dossiers on you and every other American utilizing this technology. And if you are not participating in in the civil disobedience of trying to disrupt and be a disruptive technology to this system, then you're not doing your part. Our second topic, guns and ammo. America, you're losing your Second Amendment right. There are things that are happening right now, and we're going to talk extensively about this in this segment, but you better be aware of it, and you better be working on it. I'm telling you right now, our Second Amendment is evaporating rapidly, and you've got to take some action on it. There's a couple of things that you need to know about, including the fact that ammo prices are going to start climbing very, very rapidly. Uh, Now that they've closed the lead uh, smelting plant in Missouri, uh, you're going to see ammo prices begin to rise. And I'll point you to some articles that will kind of back that argument up. Our third topic, the NSA is watching your pornography habits and other online tracking. They are building databases and dossiers to to work against you and to coerce you when you when the time comes when they're going to demand that you back off from the uh, when you back off from your positions of of arguing against their their whatever they're doing. I'm telling you right now that they have been building databases on this. That's what Obamacare is all about. That's what all of this online tracking and nonsense is about. And I'm here to tell you that if you allow this to continue, we're going to pay the price for this in a big way. It is time for you to demand that your Congress begin to immediately resolve the problem by blocking the NSA, and let's make sure that we drag Obamacare to its knees. Our fourth and final segment this morning will be Afghanistan. The new rules of engagement are criminal. Ladies and gentlemen, all the enemy has to do is run inside of a house. That's it. Safe home, like when we played tag when we were kids. Home free. All they got to do is run into a house. And and our guys cannot go into the house. They cannot pursue them. And I'm telling you, this is like, you know, years ago when you used to hear about people running across the state line to avoid authorities. Same thing. All they're going to do now is run inside of a home and they're going to call home free and, and there's nothing we can do. This is actually absolutely criminal. Between that and what we're doing on our foreign policy with Iran, that we, the fact that it broke over the course of the weekend, that uh, the United States has been negotiating with Hezbollah. I'm telling you, this is so out of control, it's stunning to me. All right, let's get into our first topic because I want to touch on this quickly. Obamacare and, uh, is, uh, and how you can shut it down by opting out. Before we get there, I want to talk about the battery station and their annual troop drive. We need your help on this, and here's what we need to do. This year, they're sending donations to the, uh, to the 1-8 CAV, 
that is they're called the Reapers. They're at, they're stationed in Afghanistan, and basically every year the Battery Station, which is uh, BatteryStation.com, they're a supporter of ours. They're a longtime friend. Kevin over there is one of my one of my good friends, and I got to tell you, these guys really do the right thing every year. Out of their own pocket, they dedicate and donate a lot of money every year. They're right here in West Plains, and um, they are. Uh, real true patriots. These these guys take every year at, out of their own inventory and out of their pocket. They send so much inform uh, so much stuff over there. These guys are located in a remote region in Afghanistan, not by their own choice, and they are in a position that is uncomfortable and difficult. So what they're looking for, and I'm going to go over this when we talk about the Afghanistan segment in, or in uh, in the Afghanistan in segment four. But what they're looking for is things like baby wipes and soap and deodorant, shampoo, toothbrushes, foot powder, magazines, newspapers and books, cards and board games, toilet paper, shoe inserts, hand lotion, cotton swabs, disposable razors. You know, the basic stuff, folks. Dominoes, some toys, right? Not toys, but stuff that these guys can do to keep themselves occupied. Playing cards. Uh, Dr. Scholl's uh, shoe or boot inserts, gel boot inserts, the ones that you can cut to fit. Uh, white tube socks, shaving cream, underwear, thermal underwear because it's winter over there. Gloves, hand warmers, foot warmers, eye drops, stuff like that. On food items, foil packs of tuna, salmon, chicken, and beef. Uh, rice and soup mixes, hard candy, cookies, beef jerky, peanuts and cashews, and snacks and stuff like that. Trail mix, Kool Aid, Kool Aid drink mixes. Uh, Chinese uh, beef beef uh, sticks and you know the 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 hot spicy stuff. Um, any any kind of sardines or canned food that will that will last across over a trip and then be able to be used over over time. Hot chocolate, hot tea, uh, coffee in in you know those Folgers packs, um, dried fruit stuff like that. <clears throat> anyway, here's the deal. You can call the battery station for more details about this. They'll take monetary donations. They'll take product donations. And you can also send donations to this address. It's the battery station at 303 Washington Avenue. That's 303 Washington Ave, West Plains, Missouri, 65775. You can also call them at 417-257-7799. You can also email them to troops at batterystation.com. That's troops at batterystation.com. Make sure that you contact them before you start sending this stuff and ask them what they are in the most most in need of. If you're going to make a monetary donation, you can call Kevin. or a new group and they donate some goods and they give them flashlights and batteries and all kinds of stuff that tactical gear and all kinds of stuff point in time thousands of dollars a year you can help them monetarily you can also help them with their actual product and needs uh, as, as well all right we'll talk a little bit more about that when we hit our fourth segment on afghanistan Let's talk about Obamacare and the opt-out issue. Folks, I've got to tell you something. For uh, By the way, there's a new website out there, and I, I encourage you to go to it. It's called ApologizeClaire.com. Apologize Claire, C-L-A-I-R-E. That's Claire McCaskill. The reason why is because 73% of Missouri said they did not want Obamacare. She went and voted for it anyway, and it's time for her to apologize. And she has been one of the best and biggest advocates for Obamacare, which is a tragedy on America. Um, she was one of the people who said, I think people don't realize that if you have your insurance, you get to keep it. Well, she's a liar, flat out lie. I'm telling you right now, stop being PC about this. Don't listen to what they tell you on the news media where they tell you, oh, don't, don't use that kind of language. You know what? She's a liar. She's a liar. Our president is a liar. Everybody in Congress who told you that is a liar and make them pay in 2014. Move every person who is eligible to be removed from the House and the Senate out and put brand new people in who have no experience and are going to be Tea Party patriots. Enough is enough, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to take this nation back. And the only way you're going to accomplish that is by making sure that you make these people pay the price for their actions. They're the ones who voted this thing in. 
They're the ones who have supported it and or funded it. They have actually sat there and attempted to make America think that this was a good thing, and it is absolute treason. I got to tell you, the truth of the matter is, Everything about Obamacare and the, and the healthcare.gov website is designed to do one thing. It has nothing to do with getting insurance to 30 million people because we now know that almost 100 million are going to lose their insurance. So you show me where that balance comes in. It is, a, it is an income redistribution program, but more importantly, what it really is, is an opportunity for them to build a dossier on you. And I'm telling you right now that this dossier is going to be the worst thing that America has ever seen. This is the kind of stuff that fascists and dictators around the world have used time and time and time and time again to build enemy lists. And if you don't think they're doing it, you're sadly mistaken. In fact, we're going to cover in our third topic how the NSA has actually, uh, and according to a Snowden, uh, another Snowden release, <clears throat> they've actually been monitoring the porn habits and activities of people in uh, these so-called terrorists so that they can utilize that information to subvert their message and or discredit them with their listenership or their 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 followers. I'm telling you, this is exactly what is wrong with this entire program. It doesn't even matter whether or not, because they'll take it out of context anyway. I mean, you'll be sitting there looking at some fashion program, and the next thing you know, they'll be calling that online pornography. I'm telling you right now, this is a database system designed to gather information because nobody can escape the healthcare system. Nobody. You can escape paying taxes. You can escape notifying the IRS who, you, who and where you are. You can go without a Social Security card. You cannot survive in the United States of America without the health care system touching you at some point in time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why they're using this system to get to you, to gather your information. And you're required by law to sign up for it. And then you're going to be thrown under the Medicaid rolls if you don't qualify to, to pay for yourself. And if you do pay for yourself, you're going to pay these jacked up rates for a bunch of health care you don't need. Because I don't know about you, but I can't use maternity care personally. One, I'm too old to have kids. Two, so is my wife. Three, I can't have kids even if I wanted to. Four, the truth of the matter is I don't want, and if you're a single man, you're paying for maternity care. I don't know. Did the rabbit test suddenly become reality? How is it that single men are required to pay for maternity care? Why is it that if you've never actually used a drug or you're, you don't drink any alcohol, you've got to pay for rehabilitation care? Because they don't care whether you can use it. They only care about the millions upon millions of people who are blood-sucking ticks that now outweigh the dog that are bleeding our nation dry. This is an income redistribution program. It is a program designed and geared to do one thing. Gather, and da gather data and information about you because you cannot avoid contacting and dealing with the medical system at some point in your life. And so, therefore, they get to build a dossier on every living American, period, end of argument. They make you submit your IRS and, and your income records. They pull up all of your information about whether or not you're a legitimate citizen. They pull up and, and, co and, and uh, coordinate with the IRS and with DHS. I'm telling you, America, this is the building of a police state like you've never seen. And what you can do about it is real simple. You can get onto the healthcare.gov website and surf around it. It's built to handle no more than 50,000 people. That's the word that's coming out now. They've done the fix. The big fix is in. Well, guess what? The whole original system wasn't designed to handle more than 1,100 users at a time when they built it. Now they say they fixed it. Well, guess what? That fix means it's only capable of handling 50,000. So get on there and surf around and create whatever you do, create whatever havoc you've got to create. It's civil disobedience, ladies and gentlemen. Make the thing crash to the ground and burn. Do whatever you've got to do to drag it to its knees. Go on there and surf around and clog the thing up. You'll make it drag, and then America will recognize what a, tr what a traitorous monster this thing is. This is Frankenstein, nothing more, nothing less. And by the way, the guy who was one of the inventors of it, Ezekiel Emanuel, who is actually the brother of Rahm Emanuel, who was the chief of staff for this disastrous dictator, that guy actually came out and said, this is very similar to Google and Facebook. Let me tell you, Google and Facebook are nothing more than more ways that they can gather and build your dossier. That's what this is about, America. It has nothing to do with anything else. Everything else you're told is a marketing lie. 
You are being fed propaganda by the bucket load. It's coming out of a fire hose and you're expected to drink out of it. I'm telling you, you need to be aware of what's happening. And if you're not aware of it, you need to be spreading the word to not only yourself, but everyone within your circle of influence. I don't care if it's only your family, if it's the five guys you go to have lunch with, if it's the 25 people you meet with, if it's, if it's your church, if it's a congregation of 50 or 5,000. The truth is, every one of us has an obligation to become a leader in making sure that we're educating everyone within our circle of influence about what's going on. Share these videos. Make sure that you're communicating with your people. If you don't want to share the video because you think I'm a loon, that's fine. Then take the message and convert it into your own words. Make sure that you're doing your own homework and your own research, utilizing your critical thinking skills. Formulate your own opinions about things and then get out there and do the job. I don't care. I'm not looking for some kind of ego boost. I don't really care whether or not you have my name tied to it. If you think I'm a tinfoil hat kook, that's great. But the truth of the matter is, this has got to be dealt with, and it's got to be dealt with by every living American. We can no longer allow this to continue. The 2014 elections are coming up, and it is incumbent on every one of you to make sure that you are expressing to everyone you know, it is the, it is the last best chance we have to regain control of this nation. If we lose this nation in 2014, if we do not gain the complete total Senate, and if we do not gain a, a true constitutional conservative base in the House that not only is under the that, that's no longer under the thumb of the Bainers and all the traitors out there, but actually has it, it can't be a minority in the House. It's got to be a majority of constitutional conservatives. Oust every Democrat, period, and only put a Republican in place if they will sign an agreement and a pact. I'm going to talk to you a little bit later this week about something called the pact. My son and I have been working on a project called The Pact, and here's what it stands for. <clears throat> Political Accountability Contract and Trust. What The Pact is, is an agreement whereby the people who are going to run for office will sign on to this agreement. And it will basically have, real. it's real easy, it will have as liquidated damages a pre-signed resignation letter that will be held in the trust of somewhere between five or 11 members who are their accountability team surrounding them. And if they violate the tenets of the contract, all they got to do is date the resignation letter and submit it to the press with 48 hours notice to the candidate. In other words, here's the real solution, folks. We don't need term limits. All we need to do is get the, tech, the, the politicians who are running for office to agree to term limits. We get them to agree in advance that if they want the support of the Tea Party, the Libertarians, if they want the support of the Constitutions, uh, Constitution Party, if they want the support of Republicans, if they want the re support of independents, they've got to sign a pact. And the pact says, one, that I'm going to, one, only run one time. And after that, I'm done if it's in the Senate, twice if it's in the House. And then you're done. That's it. You're not going to run for another office. You're going to go home. You're going to go home and do whatever you did before. And that's it. No more lobbying, no more accepting lobbying money. And when this catches on, let me tell you something, folks. It will revamp and, and re remodel the entire political arena. It will destroy parties. It will get rid of the duopoly party system. All right, we're going to run out of time. I want you to work on this Obamacare thing. And here's what I want you to do. One, I want you to go out to, to Obamacare's uh, healthcare.gov website. And I want you to surf around, and I want you to pop open as many windows as you can, click on stuff, read everything, download stuff, block that site. Use civil disobedience in a massive way. The site is only capable of handling 50,000 users. So get out there and be one of the 50 and crash the dang thing. The second issue is we need to make sure that we are telling Congress that they absolutely must repeal this because Obamacare is a disaster for America. It is a tracking system. It is nothing more than a registration system for every American. Your data is being captured. It is being gathered. It is being disseminated and shared. And you will pay the price. That is the new model for America. What do we got to do to get the data on every American? What do we got to do to build an enemies list? Here's where, here's where the rubber hits the road, folks. Time's up. No more guessing. No more gamesmanship. Just get to the heart of the matter. The best way you can do that is by dragging that website to its knees. 
listen, if it's only built for 50,000 people and everybody's got to get on there before the end of the year and sign up, they can't even hit their numbers because, first of all, they actually would be required in order to hit their targets. They'd have to sign up hundreds of thousands of users a day. So clog the pipes, clog the system. Think of it like a, a, a traffic jam. Create a traffic jam and do it with the idea that you are being civilly disobedient. I'm not telling you to break any laws. I'm just telling you to go on there and hack the thing so that and not hack it in the sense that you're breaking the law. But but make sure that you are doing your level best to clog up the works. Civil disobedience in a massive fashion. It's no different than sitting down and protesting. It's no different than holding up a sign that says repeal Obamacare. It's not illegal. You can do it. Just get on there and surf it. Click on every link you can find. Keep opening new tabs. Lock it up. Lock it down. Shut it down. And opt out. Do not participate in it because by putting your name into that system and putting all of your financial data, putting all of your social information in there, putting in all of your information that they're asking for, you are giving them everything they need to build the dossier on you. The truth is we do need health care reform in this nation. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Most Americans have no idea that when they are shoved into Obamacare, they're going to get kicked into the Medicaid rolls. And do you know what one of the rules are of Medicaid? That all the assets that you have, any equity you have in your home, any equity you have in your farm, all of it becomes Medicaid's. Medicaid's. You're going to lose everything that you have by signing up for this. And you're not even given a choice. If your income is below a certain level, you're, it's automatic. You're tossed onto the Medicaid rolls. It is a way to steal the, lev- steal the equity out of Americans' pockets. Low- and middle-income Americans will be destroyed by this system. We've got about a minute left. I want to make sure that you guys are, are, uh, are, are aware of the phone number for Congress. You got to put this down in your phone. You got to write it down at home and put it up on the refrigerator. Use it. Get your husband, get your wife, get your kids, your adult children to use it. Everybody should be using these numbers. It is 202 224 3121. And ask for your Senate or House Congress critter by name. 202 224 3121. Write that number down. Put it in your cell phone. Put it at your home phone. Put it at your desk phone at work and make sure that you use it liberally every single day. Burn their phone lines to the ground. That's how they listen, people. Send them email. But make sure that you're using those phone lines. You're listening to America's Voice. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to return. Upon our return, we will tackle our second topic, guns and ammo, and how you as an American are losing your Second Amendment rights. It's happening. com forward slash America's Voice Now and YouTube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. We'll be back in just a moment. Stick with Listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans, and we have uh, been kicking it off here on Monday morning. Today is December 2nd. You can find our website by going to americasvoicenow.org. 
we encourage you to participate with us, learn everything you can about what is happening in America, fight back. One of our mottos is delivering truth and exposing mainstream propaganda. Ladies and gentlemen, you're being tricked and fooled and, and, and misdirected and misled by the media in this country. You need to utilize alternative media to fight back. Educate yourself, inform yourself, and then take that education and information and share it with your circle of influence, your personal circle. I don't care if it's the three guys you go hunting with or if it's the ten, the ten people that you are a member of an organization with. I don't care if it's the five guys you have lunch with on a routine basis at, you, at your job. I don't care if it's your church, your school, whatever it is, your civic organization. You share and educate those around you. We're in the closing days of losing liberty and freedom in America, and it is time for you to do something about it. We are losing our Second Amendment. The United States of America is literally about to have our Second Amendment stolen from us. You know, there's a gun ban that was signed in 1988. And at the time, it, nobody really cared because it wasn't possible. But it banned all plastic firearms. Now, they're about to renew that ban. And I got to tell you, they're looking to do this in the face of the fact that now 3 3D printing is available and as a result 3D printing can print a gun literally of made of plastic <clears throat> it can actually print a physical weapon that you can use and the technology is so sophisticated at this point you can print an AR15 folks the only thing you need is a piece of steel for the barrel and some receivers there are you know li- literally uh, minimal uh, metal parts necessary But I got to tell you, you can even make a single shot weapon completely out of plastic and they want nothing to do with this. They are desperate to try to seek and extend this ban on national security grounds. Let me tell you something that I, I want you to I want you to think for a moment. Just think for a minute. What was it that our founders told us about why you need to own weapons? It's not to hunt. It's not to go out target shooting. It's not to take out a duck or a deer. It is to protect your nation against tyranny. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't see tyranny in everything that's going on around us today, you're blind or you're not looking or you're willfully turning your head away. Our nation is under a terrible slide. We are in the process right now of falling into fascism and tyranny. And this is just another example of that. When they seek this ban on national security grounds, the next thing you know, they'll, it'll go through mission creep where they'll be inserting other things. Well, you can only have so many plastic parts or some other nonsense. And the truth of the matter is, let me tell you something. This is our country. It's our nation. It's our Bill of Rights. It's our Second Amendment, not theirs to take away from you. And your unwillingness to recognize that, your unwillingness to sit down and fight back is going to give them all the power that they need to strip you of the one thing that keeps them from turning this into a literal totalitarianistic dictatorship. If you trust this president, if you trust this Congress not to not to turn this nation into a a an authoritarian regime, man, I'll tell you what, you are either blind or you've got an enormous amount of trust for the goodwill of humanity. But I can tell you this, it was our founders who told us, forget about trusting men's good judgment and good ethics and goodwill. Bind them down with the chains of a constitution because that is the only way in which you may keep your nation free. That is the only way in which you may keep liberty That is the only way in which you may hand that off to those generations that come after us. Right now, they are trying to pass new legislation, and you need to get on the phone and call your House and your Senate members and tell them any passage of any limitation on firearms, plastic, metal, cloud, air, smoke, I don't care what it's made out of, that is an act of treason and an unconstitutional violation 
of your right to bear arms. Period. End of discussion. You have the right to own anything you want, plastic or otherwise. I don't want to hear it's about national security. That's what we've been hearing about the NSA. That's what we've been hearing about the FBI sitting there and doing the NSA's dirty work on the backside where the NSA is prohibited legally from getting it. The FBI is doing it for them. That's what we heard about the uh, the Fast and Furious scandal. That's what we heard about the IRS scan. I'm tired of hearing that lie. You know, Franklin said to us that if you were willing to trade your security, I'm sorry, if you're willing to trade your freedom and your liberty for security and safety, you'll end up with neither. Remember that adage because it's absolutely true. You need to pick up the telephone and call your Congress animals and let them know under no certain, under no certain terms that if they vote to limit, to limit your Second Amendment rights, plastic or otherwise, 3D printed gun or otherwise, that is an act of treason against the Constitution of the United States of America that they have sworn an oath to uphold. 202-224-3121. Let me give it to you again. 202-224-3121. If you're not a normal, regular listener, I'm telling you right now, you better start keeping a pad and pen handy when you, t- when you listen to this program because we give out information that you absolutely have to have all the time. And I don't want to. I don't. I don't want people to send me an email or post something on Facebook. Hey, could you give me that number again? Write it down. Put it in your phone. Store it under Congressional Switchboard. It's two zero two, two two four, thirty one twenty one. And what you do with that number is you call up there and ask for your Congress animal, whatever that Congress animal's name may be. And if you don't know your own congressman at this point in time, both Senate and House. Shame on you. Go do a look up and find out. You need to burn their phone lines to the ground on this, America, and tell them, and this, this is going to come as early as today, so you better get on the phone right now. 204-224-3121. You tell them that any ban on plastic weapons is a ban on the Second Amendment, and you will act as if that was an act of treason violating their oath of office and their oath to defend and protect the Constitution. It doesn't say in the Constitution that you can own a firearm except for plastic ones. Did you hear what I just said? It doesn't matter whether or not it's plastic or metal. And by the way, they're now printing 3D metal guns, and they don't want you to have access to that. In fact, they've gone so far as to make it illegal just to distribute the plans for people who want to buy a 3D printer at home. Do you listen? Don't don't you see what's happening? This, you know. The truth of the matter is here, everyone is looking to subvert and, and, and take your rights away. Your First Amendment right of free speech is on is under threat. They're already talking about trying to license journalists so that they can knock guys like me out of the box. They're already talking about being able to limit your, well, you already know that your, your, your free speech in terms of being able to protest your government's been stripped from you. Go ahead and try to, go ahead and try to create a protest in Washington, D.C. and see what happens. You've got to meet in a certain place at a certain time. You've got to get an appointment. You're allowed to go only this place. You've got to stay within these fenced lines. That's not what this country is about. Your right to worship has been stripped from you because you're now forced to to sign on for things like abortion and Obamacare, whether you like it or not. Your Second Amendment being taken from you will result in the final the final the final straw that will break this camel's back. Your Fourth Amendment has already been subverted against illegal search and seizure. The courts routinely uh, make rulings that say that the cops can pretty much do dog doggone anything they want. Not to mention the fact that they are sitting there allowing them to use GPS and all of this tracking from the NSA. I put up an article this morning about how police are actually putting up these false cell site towers that capture all of the data from everybody surrounding it, anybody who drives through its zone of coverage, and it captures your phone calls, your GPS tracking, all of that information, and it sucks it up. In Seattle, they put these uh, light poles up that were actually tracking you within a 1,000 mouse trail droppings behind you for the last thousand places your GPS had tracked you. 
Don't you smell it, America? This is 1984, and it's coming to life right in front of your eyes. Your Fourth Amendment right has also been subverted because you are required by law, by law, to sign up for Obamacare. Well, guess what? It says right on Obamacare's website that all the information that you submit can be used for audit purposes, investigation purposes, law enforcement purposes. Oh, really? Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? So basically, here's the deal. Everything that you put into the Obamacare system is shared with every other federal agency, including law enforcement and the IRS. And they're looking to use that information against you. Your Fifth Amendment right has been waived because you are required to submit that information, which automatically incriminates you. And so you don't even have the right to say, I plead the fifth because I don't want to incriminate myself. Because another law has been passed that says you've got to submit your information. It's ridiculous. Don't you see it? If at this point in time you haven't grasped the realities of where we're headed, I got to tell you, you have far more trust than anyone I have ever met. The plans are out there for these metal weapons and plastic weapons. Any limitation on your ability to own a firearm is merely a restriction on your Second Amendment right. And the Second Amendment does not say you can own a firearm as long as it's not made of plastic, as long as it's not as long as it doesn't hold this many rounds, as long as it doesn't shoot more than one round with a pull of the trigger. That's all marketing nonsense. They've been chipping away at the pillar of this thing for decades now, for 100 years. And now they've almost got it to the point where the tower, the pillar, is about to collapse. And i got to tell you something, folks. It's the one pillar that holds up the roof of liberty and freedom for the whole nation. You know why the Japanese said that they wouldn't attack the United States in World War II? They said because there are so many guns there that there would be a, a gun behind every rock and every blade of grass. Do you know why we're not in a totalitarian government, fascist government right now? Because there are 300 million guns out there in the hands of 100 million gun owners. That's why. Recognize what's happening around you. Our rights are being stripped from us as rapidly as they can possibly be. Don't you smell what's happening around you? The Undetectable Firearm Act is set to expire on midnight, December 9th. It was passed in 98. And it was renewed again in 19, I'm sorry, 88. And it was, it was renewed in 98 and again in 2003. But that's because 3D printers weren't widely available. In fact, at that point in time, don't forget, in 2003, there was, there was an idea, but nobody had actually brought it to fruition. Now you can buy a 3D printer and literally print a piece of plastic. I mean, you can print a keychain and a gun. And they don't want that. Why? Because, one, under ATF regulations, which, by the way, we can touch on that in a moment, but the ATF and the Second Amendment are so diametrically opposed, it's like matter and antimatter occupying the same space. You can't have a free Second Amendment, a free nation and liberty, and, a, and, and an ATF agency whose, whose sole function is to limit your ability to own a firearm. And I'm going to tell you, They're working to restrict your access to ammunition because they just closed the last smelting plant for lead in the United States of America. The, the Herculaneum plant right here in Missouri, in Herculaneum, Missouri, was the last U.S. smelter of its kind making uh, smelting lead. And it's closing its doors. To The way in which America can print and own a gun. Second
you want, anytime, anyway, anyhow, anywhere, any what. You know why? Because our founders told us very clearly that any law which subverts the Constitution is no law at all. It is null and void on its face because Congress doesn't have the right to subvert the Constitution. Neither does the president. Neither neither do the courts. The simple truth is America has fallen victim to this marketing scheme and scam that we've been told that, well, everything is subject to what Congress wants to say. Congress says it's illegal, so it must be. That's a lie. And it's being perpetrated on you every single day. The truth of the matter is Congress doesn't have a right to say anything about what your rights are. They really don't. You know, I I can't encourage you strongly enough to read the words of our founders. You know, I'm going to read you two things that I think are important for you to know, both of them by Thomas Jefferson. And, and, you know, the ATF limits your ability to own firearms utilizing the Commerce Clause in an unconstitutional fashion by saying that the Commerce Clause really gives them the power to regulate all commerce in the country. And if a gun crosses state lines, therefore it's illegal and blah, 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 blah. Here's what Thomas Jefferson said about that. Our tenant ever was that Congress does not have unlimited powers to provide for the general welfare, but we're restrained to those specifically enumerated. And that, as it was never meant that they should provide for that welfare, but by the exercise of those enumerated powers, so it could not have been meant that they should raise money for purposes which the enumeration did not place under their action and discretion. Consequently, the speculation of I'm sorry, the specification of powers is a limitation of the purposes to which they may raise money. So let me translate that for you into modern English. We believed that, and and we always believed, and we all collectively believed, our tenant ever was, that Congress does not have unlimited power to provide for the general welfare, that the Constitution put in place restraints that were specifically enumerated. And since we never meant that they should have unlimited power to provide for the general welfare, except by the exercise of these very limited delegated authorities that we give them, No one should take it to mean that they should be able to raise money for purposes which did not which did not fall up underneath those limited delegated powers. Consequently, the the, the specification of powers that was outlined in the Constitution is a limitation of the purposes for which Congress may actually raise money. So Congress is raising money every day to burn your rights down, utilizing Congress and the ATF utilizing laws and regulations which unconstitutional administrative agencies pass every single day. You, look, the Second Amendment is a right that was given to you not by Congress. It was given to you by God and your creator and nature's and natural law and nature's God. The right to self-defense and the right to defend your nation and your state and your county and your government Those rights are inherent to you, whether you live in America or you live in Botswana. The truth of the matter is we're only we're the only ones that ever actually put it in writing and enumerated it. But it doesn't make any it doesn't change the fact that every human being has those natural rights. They were endowed with them by their creator, not by Congress, not by the Constitution, not even by our founders. All they did was put it in writing. And what they said was that we give Congress a very limited scope of power by which they can promote general welfare of the people. But Congress has completely usurped that, and they've taken it, and they've taken a lunch bag, a brown paper sack that you would carry, that would handle a sandwich or two, and they've turned it into this massive dumping ground where they pile all manner of treasonous acts against America. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a follow-up quote from Thomas Jefferson that really sums this whole issue up for the Second Amendment. Because i I got to tell you, <clears throat> I don't think most Americans realize, because they don't read, they don't read what the founders actually said. Go read the Federalist Papers and get a hold of Mary, uh, Mary Webster's the Federalist Papers converted to modern English, so it makes it a little, a little easier to understand. But also read 
the original Federalist Papers and Mary Webster's uh, commentaries on them side by side so that you're seeing her interpretation of what their old English was. Because I get it. It's kind of hard to, to understand. But if you read those, if you understand those, if you're paying attention to that, you will recognize that under no circumstances is Congress acting constitutionally at all. All of this stuff was prohibited. That's why when I when I tell you, don't believe what the courts tell you either, because the courts sit there and say, well, it's our job to interpret what the Constitution meant. If you want to know what the Constitution meant, why don't you go ask the guys who read it? They wrote it all down for you. It's called the Federalist and the Anti-Federalist Papers. Go read the writings of Thomas Jefferson. Go read the writings of Madison. Those were the guys who created it and wrote it. Why would you take the word from some judge who's guessing and has bias rather than read it and hear from the horse's mouth? Here's the other comment Jefferson made, and it's directly related to the Second Amendment. The spirit of resistance to government is so valuable on certain occasions that I wish it would always be kept alive. It will often be exercised when wrong, but better so than not to be exercised at all. I like a little rebellion now and then. It is like a storm in the atmosphere. Listen to that. The spirit of resistance to government is so valuable on certain occasions that I wish it to be always kept alive. It will often be exercised when wrong, but better that it to be better so than not to be exercised at all. I like a little rebellion now and then. It is like a storm in the atmosphere. Ask yourself, when was the last time you rebelled? Or are you just a sheeple doing what you're told? Are you just marching down the funnel that you're given? Going where you're told to go? Looking at, at things the way that you're told to look at them? Are you falling in line with the the diarrhea surge of propaganda that is pouring out of the out of the the orifice of this government and this press who has nothing more they act as nothing more than a mouthpiece for the government if you are watching and, and reading mainstream media and you're not doing it with a critical thinking eye to su- to separate the ch- the wheat from the chaff then you're being fooled and played if you're listening to alternative media you still have to use the same critical thinking eye and ear and, 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 and read. But at the same point in time, at least you're getting truth where the mainstream media refuses to even acknowledge some of these stories exist. You know, John Adams came out and said, a constitution of government once changed from freedom can never be restored. Liberty once lost is lost forever. Wow. Wow. That's one heck of a statement. A constitution of government once changed from freedom can never be restored. Liberty once lost is lost forever. Man, that is, I mean, look. These are the guys who actually did all the studying and the research that all of all of our people in Congress don't do. They read 2,000-page books all the time. And you can't even get Congress to read a 2,000-page law that they passed illegally. It's called Obamacare. America, get out there and fight any way you can. Use your creativity. Be civilly disruptive. Be civilly disobedient in everything that you do. Get on the phone. Fight back against this stuff. Tell these people in Congress that we are watching them and that we are acting upon their actions to hold them accountable. That a law that would prohibit you from owning a plastic firearm is a violation of the Second Amendment. End of argument. 202-224-3121. 202 202- Two two four thirty one twenty one. I mean, I don't know what more you want in order to, to get this thing resolved because we're <laughs> at this point. Listen, they are completely stripping us of our ability to to operate and, and, and live in freedom and liberty. 
We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we're going to tackle our third subject. The NSA is watching your porn habits, your internet habits, and they're doing it for one reason, to coerce you. We'll be right back. self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. All right. We're back. You know, I feel like we're flying through these segments this morning. Maybe I had too much coffee. <laughs> You're listening to America's Voice now. My name is Michael Evans. I'm your host. Um, we are uh, looking this morning at, and we're in, we're in our uh, third segment. It is uh, December uh, December second. We are in our third segment, and we're going to be talking about how the NSA is watching your online porn habits as well as your online surfing habits, as well as your social media habits, as well as your spending habits, as well as where you're utilizing your credit cards habits, all the habits that you have, they're building dossiers on. And they're using that to create a database of of ways in which they can subvert and coerce you to do their bidding. There's a report out on The Blaze and on the Huffington Post over the weekend that, uh, you know, Snowden has dropped another bomb here, another bombshell. Top secret document reveals that the NSA spied on porn habits as part of a plan to discredit radicalizers. Now, the examples that they give here are from individuals who were... um, supposedly religious zealots under, you know, the, the, doc, the doctrine of terrorism. But the truth of the matter is, let me tell you something. Don't give, don't give one second's worth of thought to the idea that they are not doing this on ordinary Americans as well. They are. In fact, there's an article out this morning about how in Australia they, are, they were actually selling the data from Australians and not stripping out the metadata including to the United States. I mean, you know, they say, well, you you can trust us with all of this data because we wouldn't use it against you. Let me tell you something. If you believe that, you're, you're really dumb. Really. Think about it. Why does the government need all of this data about you? What can they do with it? What will they do with it? Well, I can tell you this. Nothing, nothing good will come from the government building this kind of a database on every American. The truth is, if you believe that I'm wrong, then I'm challenging you, and I've had this challenge as a wide-open challenge. I will pay you $100. I will pay you $100 if you can send me a legitimate, well-reasoned excuse for why or, or reason for where this is going to benefit you personally. In other words... I want you, if you believe that this is wrong, that this positioning is is completely erroneous, if you think I'm wrong, this is an open standing challenge, and I've, I've had it out there for probably almost a year by now. If you believe 
that the government is going to use all of this data they're collecting about your finances, about your Internet surfing, about all of your telephone calls, about all of your emails, about all of your IRS and and financial transactions, about all your credit card purchases, about where you go and how you go about it and what you're what you're saying on the Web and what your social media is. Find me one example of how you personally can benefit because government has all this information on you. It's got to be a legitimate benefit. If you're right, I'll pay you 100 bucks. I'm telling you right now, I've had this thing open for almost a year and I've not gotten a single email that justifies it. You know why? Because there isn't one. This is the safest bet I've ever made. If I could go and and, and make a bet like this in Vegas, I would bet this a thousand times a day. And I'd be a very, very wealthy man. Nothing come from this kind of information. a top secret NSA document dropped by Edward Snowden, another one. Not talking a whole lot about Now, let's just take a look at that for a moment. First of all, it doesn't require that you visit a pornography site for them to undermine your credibility, reputation, and authority. It could be anything. It could be something as simple, and we've, we've already seen examples of this. We ha- there was the example of that couple who were going to look at um, knapsacks. The husband was looking at knapsacks on the web. The wife was looking at... Uh, uh, this was, uh, oh, at um, pressure cookers around the time of the Boston bombing. And they got a visit by their by their FBI. Yeah. She's looking up pressure cookers. He's looking up knapsacks. And the two of them looked like they were part of the Boston bombing game. So they get a visit by the FBI who knocks on their door and says, uh, excuse me, but we notice these searches are going on and we don't know who's really responsible. Turns out he had no idea she was looking at pressure cookers and she had no idea he was looking at knapsacks. <laughs> I mean, don't you see it, people? Let your mind just let your mind free for a moment. The credibility, reputation and authority of undermining or, or undermining those of people does not require that you visit, you know, blatant online pornography sites. Could be anything. Could be that that link that you click that says, uh, "Look at the top twenty uh, swimsuit models," in in Sports Illustrated. I mean, look. The truth of the matter is, all they've got to do is make the accusation. It's up to you to defend it. Meanwhile, your credibility is destroyed. And if you don't think for two seconds that they are not going to utilize this, how about when you go to online gambling websites? Well, they just legalized gambling in New Jersey online. They're trying to do it in Vegas right now. So think about that for a moment. You go online and gamble, and suddenly when you try to run for office, somebody leaks that data to your opposition and says, aha, this girl looks at online gambling websites. This guy has been looking at online pornography. They don't tell you that the pornography was the swimsuit edition. All they got to do is throw the word pornography out there and boom, your credibility is dead. Don't you even understand what is really going on here? The, The idea that this will be used and, and they use the, they use the words viewing among the vulnerabilities listed by the NSA that can be effectively exploited are viewing sexually explicit material online and using sexually explicit persuasive language when communicating with inexperienced young girls. That's related to these six uh, alleged terrorists they were looking at. But recognize what's going on here. Sorry. Recognize what's going on here. 
This is a program, not for six isolated terrorists out there and in, in, in some, you know, living in a cave somewhere. This is a program that is being utilized, not just for you, 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 you know, people think sit there and say, well, you know, listen, I don't think they're really caring about what pornography is. I'm telling you, you're wrong. I'm telling you, you're wrong. I'm telling you that it won't even be, you know, you go to you go to a, a Victoria's Secret to shop for something for your wife. And that can be classified as what? Aha, sexually explicit. <laughs> you don't even get it because it's not a question of whether or not you really did something right or wrong. It's a question of how can it be how can it be construed or skewed? to make it look like something it wasn't. The truth is, we already know that they have been trying to set up liberty and freedom advocates with child, somebody has, with child pornography images sent to them in email. I mean, these guys reported it to the FBI and they were, and, and, and they were proven to be accurate. They were sending them messages in email with attachments. And the attachments contain child pornography. And if they'd opened those attachments, it would, have impri- it would have imprinted that image on their hard drive. And then they could call up the police and say, go, go look over there at so-and-so's hard drive and you'll find child pornography there. Don't you see what's going on, folks? Every person who is under the auspices of the, of, of the government is being categorized, profiled, set up. And this way, when you are the kind of person who they feel is a threat because you are effective at saying, hey, something's wrong here, they got a way to get you down. They got a way to drag you down to to kill your credibility, to kill your reputation, to kill any authority that you may have within your circle of influence. And that doesn't matter whether that circle of influence, again, it's five people or five million. The truth of the matter is, They are talking about a program, and the program actually has a name. So the the, the problem here is that if the program has actually been given a name, and and this program is being used uh, on a routine basis, and you think they're only applying it to, to Islamic terrorists, you're really stupid. Think about it for a minute. There's a guy named Jaffer who's the deputy legal director for the American Civil Liberties Union. And he says these, liber- these revelations give rise to serious concerns about abuse. You know, I'm tired of that politically correct language. I have deep concerns. I have serious concerns. I am concerned. I'm not concerned. I'm outraged and I'm scared. And you should be too. Quote, it's important to remember that the NSA's surveillance activities are anything but narrowly focused. The agency is collecting massive amounts of sensitive information about virtually everyone. Wherever you are, the NSA's databases store information about your political views, your medical history, your intimate relationships, and your activities online. The NSA says this personal information won't be abused, but these documents show that the NSA probably defines abuse very narrowly. You see, the truth is, and by the way, one of these people was identified as a U.S. person, one of these six uh, alleged, you know, people involved in terror plots. And by the way, not a single one of them was accused of terrorism. None of these individuals targeted by the NSA is accused of being involved in terror plots. So don't you see it? You don't have to actually be, you know, involved in a terror plot to come under their radar. And, they, and it does define one of these people as a U.S. person. <laughs> you know, the truth is that at this stage in the game, what we have to recognize is that your government is working to Identify and profile everyone. This is the precursor steps. These are the ingredients required for tyranny. One, you know everyone out there. Two, 
you've got all kinds of information about them. Three, that you have you have a, a system whereby they must interact with it. Healthcare. Because once they are in, imported into the system, there's no escape. The truth is, The truth is that your government at this point is an enemy of the state of liberty and freedom. And I don't know how else to say it. I don't know any polite way to say that our nation is operating in open and blatant treason. They are working openly to subvert the Constitution, to strip you of your rights, they are doing everything in their power to separate you from your God-given natural law rights. Meanwhile, they go out there and do whatever they want. They're in secret talks with Hezbollah. They've been in secret talks on the TPP, the TTIP, with Iran over the course of the last year on this nuclear thing. They're out there inserting Common Core into your kids' schools. They're not doing what they should be doing to actually protect us. They're doing everything that they're doing so that they can strip you of your rights. In fact, it just came out that the U.S. government was caught using pirated software for the military, and they settled for 50 million bucks. If you did that, you'd be in prison for 10 years. And if you were a corporation that did that, the truth is that the, the requested uh, amount, which was $240 million, the government would have backed the, the software manufacturer and said, you've got to pay the two, full 240 plus penalties, plus interest, plus whatever else we can hit you for as a, as a penalty on the government side as a fine. But the government says, well, it's OK for us to pirate software, just not you. Man, the pot is boiling, ladies and gentlemen. And you are apparently swimming around in abject bliss, not aware of the danger that you're in. But your blood is about to boil, and you will shortly be cooked. If the Nazis, if the Stasis, if the, if the Kremlin, if, if Mao and his ilk, and the Chinese had the kind of technology that we have today, they might have been successful. <laughs> the truth is, you know, the chairman of the Intel subcommittee, and I put a, a video up on America's Voice Now and on Facebook about this, Senator Dianne Feinstein and Rep. Mike Rogers are telling Candy Crowley from Communist News Now, I mean CNN, that we're not safer from terror today. The truth be known, the only terrorists you need to fear are those based in Washington, D.C., with the name like Feinstein, Mike Rogers, Chuck Schumer, Jolly Wrangle, Barack Obama, John Boehner, John McCain. You already know who the players are. They're traitors and treasonists. Because they're not interested in protecting you. They're not interested in doing what's right. They're only interested in, one, annexing more and more and more and more power. Annexing all of your information together so that they can utilize it against you. And to subvert and, 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 and subjugate the American population. They're okay with your being propagandized by the media. In fact, they participate in it every day. It's open. It's blatant. They're not even trying to hide it anymore, ladies and gentlemen. They no longer even care if you know. In South Carolina, the police are using uh, a, 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 something called a tower dump. 
And this is basically an antenna that they put up on a cell tower. And, and they're, they're granted access to thousands of cell phone users' data. So it's a tower dump. Basically, they put out a, they, they, every, every cell phone that drives through the coverage range of this thing, all their call, text, and data transmissions are captured by this, docu- by this uh, device. Search warrants are then obtained, basically utilizing that information. Now, they say, well, it's interesting. You got to hear their arguments. The police must obtain and present a search warrant to cell providers in order to access the data. The amount of information gathered, especially on those not suspected of a crime, however, presents a clear constitutional violation. In other words, they're gathering this information on everyone, but they're really only after one person who may or may not have committed a crime. And their excuse is that they can hold on to it indefinitely. According to the Richland County Sheriff's Department, innocent cell users, listen to this, have nothing to fear, but apparently waive their rights once their data connects to a cell tower. Quote, somebody's innocent phone tower data. We don't need that. We don't want that. We don't care for it, says Sheriff Leon Lott. We're not infringing on their rights. When they use that telephone, they understand that the information is going to go to a tower. Really? No, they don't. And they have no idea that you are sitting there collecting all of it. (laughs) Here's what they do. Once the information is captured by them, under South Carolina evidence retention laws, If a suspect is convicted of a crime in which a tower dump was used, police can hold all the information gathered, not just on that individual, but all of it for up to seven years, including the data of all the innocent cell phone users. So basically, all they've got to do is utilize these cell tower dumps to gather more and more and more data on you. And if they solve one crime, they can say. In front of your face. That's essentially where we are. to a court with this pornography that they or, or their 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 habits online of going to read swimsuit uh, sports illustrated swimsuit edition do you no they're going to go out there and they're just going to send out some information to somebody to utilize as a discredit it's called leaking it's picked up by the guy who's trying to run for office by his opposition and they put it out there as if and they don't even have to make it a fact all they got to do is basically say hey it's out there and leave him to defend himself or her to defend herself. See, we've now gone into this position where we're looking at politics and and those people who are fighting for our liberty as the enemies of the state, when in fact it's the other way around. All right, we're going to take a break. When we return, we're going to tackle our fourth and final topic, Afghanistan and the rules of engagement. When you hear these people... Under the new Afghanistan agreement, you're going to be stunned. It's unbelievable. Email me about any of our news topics, anything we talk about on the program. I want to hear your feedback. Mike at americasvoicenow.org. We'll be right back.
listening to America's Voice now. We're back with our final, our fourth and final topic. You know, they just are, are signing an agreement with Afghanistan about keeping troops over there. And I know that a lot of people kind of want to push this, this kind of stuff into the back of their minds. But I got to tell you, one of, the, one of the rules of engagement that they're incorporating into this new agreement is criminal. Um, they're limiting the actions of the U.S. troops and the drones that are in Afghanistan, and the president has agreed to it. And, and here's, here's what it looks like. This is really bad. <laughs> if, the, if the terrorists or the people that they're in, in a pitched gun battle with run inside of a dwelling, they're safe. That's it. They call home free, and you can't chase after them. You can't enter the building. The new U.S.-Afghanistan security agreement puts these restrictions into the rules of engagement for American troops. And it makes any Afghan dwelling a virtual safe haven for the enemy. This puts the burden on the U.S. air and ground troops to confirm with certainty that a Taliban fighter is armed before they can fire, even if they're 100% sure the target is the enemy. Now, there's been a lot of cases lately where aerial gunships and uh, the, the, the um, soldiers have been denied permission to fire, even though the targets that they, were, that they were requesting approval to fire on were armed. And I got to tell you, your president, because he's certainly not mine, he may be the president of the United States of America, but he's a usurper. He's a liar. He's not an American citizen. He doesn't even have a legitimate birth certificate. He doesn't have a legitimate Social Security number. And worse yet, he wasn't born here. So he doesn't have America bound up in his growth and in his youth and in his understanding. He doesn't understand this country, why we live the way we do, why we love freedom and liberty the way we do. And all he's interested in is subverting that. And, and while he is sitting here beating the crap out of Americans with the EPA and all these regulations and IRS and, and, and building dossiers and enemy lists on Americans, he's giving the enemy free reign to do whatever they want at our cost and expense, at the cost of the lives of our soldiers. I got to tell you, that's treasonous. You're betraying your own soldiers. If they if we can't have an agreement that allows our troops to act in a in a, as a as a functional war machine, then we don't belong there. It's that simple. John Kerry is the guy who's negotiating this for us. I wouldn't let John Kerry negotiate a speeding ticket for me. It prohibits all U.S. troops from entering dwellings during combat. And Obama made the vow that he would allow this and approve it directly to Karzai. Here's what it says. And here's what Obama said in a letter. In a letter. And he put it in writing now. This is not my words. These are President Barack Obama's pledge directly written in a letter to President Hamid Karzai, the Afghan leader. U.S. forces shall not enter Afghan homes for the purposes of military operations, except under extraordinary circumstances involving urgent risk to life and limb of U.S. nationals. So what that means is simply this. If there's a kidnapped soldier inside the house, they can go in. But if not, once they enter that building, they don't even have to shut the door. They can stand there in the door and go, nani, nani, foo, foo. Are we involved in a war or is this a game of tag? Because American soldiers are dying. Men and women are dying and losing their lives, losing their limbs, losing their ability to, to, to speak and to think. They're losing their eyesight. They're losing their hearing. 
They're coming back with mental problems because they're watching their friends be blown up and there's not a thing they can do about it. Because after the guy pushes the button and, or, or, or pulls the trigger, he runs inside an Afghan building and he says, Nani, nani, foo, foo, you can't get me. Ha, 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 ha. And you wonder why these guys are coming back with PTSD. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Soldier Joe is sitting there holding his friend. And bathed in his blood. The guy who commanded the assault team <clears throat> for SEAL Team 6 had this to say about the security deal. The first people who are going to look at it and, and review it are the enemy we're trying to fight. It's going to be a document that can be used effectively against us. This is where we either fight or go home. What's happening is we're losing our ability to fight overseas. Now, that's a man whose boots are on the ground. He's not ensconced in some palace in Washington, D.C. He's not making 192000 or 195000 a year. He doesn't get free haircuts. He doesn't get cover-ups when he gets caught DWI or bouncing a check or beating up his wife. This is a guy who sleeps in the dirt. This is a guy who is out there probably without a shower for months on a, at a time. And he knows that the enemy is going to sit there and, and, and take a, a document like this that our president pledged in writing, U.S. forces shall not enter, shall not. That means must not, cannot. U.S. forces shall not enter Afghan homes for the purposes of military operations, except under extraordinary circumstances involving urgent risk to life and limb of U.S. nationals. Troops have been complaining for a long time about the meeting, meeting the, the onerous requirements of the prior checklist of, of um, uh, rules of engagement. The rules were actually made even more strict in 2010 after the, the U.S. bombings that killed a couple of civilians over there and a spec ops uh, troops uh, raid that went down in, in some villages and homes. But this is getting, giving every dwelling a free pass, a free ride. Army, uh, Army Colonel Ken Allard, who's now a military analyst, he's retired. Here's what he had to say. Call me crazy, but what on earth is the point of remaining there under these rules of engagement? much less subjecting American soldiers to another set of restrictions that make sense only in proportion to your distance from the combat zone. The truth is, the truth is, this is designed and... <clears throat> How do I say this? I believe that this president and John Kerry understand the value of this agreement and how it benefits the enemy. This is aiding and abetting the enemy. There is absolutely no denying it. And they know that it's going to cost lives for Americans. They know that American young men and American young women are going to be killed as a result of this. And they also know that it's not necessary for them to agree to this. I mean, it's one thing for a commander-in-chief or a military commander to say, I know that by sending my men into this battle, they're going to be killed. It's another thing entirely 
to say, I know that by sending my men into this battle unarmed, they're all going to be killed. No general would would send his men into battle unarmed. And if you want to follow the concept that President Obama is the the de facto civil leader of the military and the commander in chief, then I got to tell you, he is acting against the best interests of his own soldiers. And he knows it. The problem that we have is that this is designed to kill Americans. I believe that. I believe that Kerry and Obama looked at this and either one of two conversations went down. You know, Mr. President, this is going to result in the deaths of a lot of of a lot of American soldiers. Or the conversation went more like this. You know, we can get rid of a lot of soldiers who are well trained and prevent them from coming home where they could potentially do damage here against our tyranny. I'm willing to suggest to you that even if that conversation didn't go down that way, they both understood that that was the real decision made here. I don't believe for a moment that anything is past these people. And when I say these people, I mean everyone in D.C. I'm talking about all of them. I'm talking about these people who are in Congress, the people in the administration, the people in the judicial system, the people in the NSA, the FBI, the IRS, the people in, in the EPA and thousands of other extra constitutional administrative agencies just like them. You are nothing more than collateral damage. And in some cases, you are targeted collateral. I believe that this government is seriously and deeply concerned about the number of hardened authorization is gearing up to go to war against Americans. You can apply whatever ism you want to that. Fascism, socialism, communism, I don't even care. That's a debate for another day. But what does matter is that this nation is being turned into an authoritarian totalitarianism or totalitarianship. And they're plotting and they're planning and FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security. And this president, the Veterans Administration, are working actively to strip the the firearms rights from returning veterans. Why are they working so hard at that? If not to to take those people out of the mix. Why? Because they know how to fight a war. They know how to prosecute a war. 
The average Joe Sixpack who's sitting on his couch eating, eating potato chips, angry at what's going on, he doesn't. If you've never had military experience, you don't know how to prosecute a war. You can sit there and say, yeah, I got me a shotgun. I'm protecting my house no matter what. But the truth of the matter is, you don't understand the real tactics that will be used against you. Military men do. Military women do. Hundreds of generals, hundreds of senior executive military officers have been purged in the last couple of years. They're under orders not to relinquish or discuss the terms of that. But I got to tell you, I think it's time that some of them stood up and said, I'm going to do an Edward Snowden here and I'm going to break protocol. I'm going to break ranks and I don't care whether I signed a non-disclosure agreement or not. I'm going to tell the truth that I was fired because I refused to sign a document that said I would fire on Americans. I was fired because I stood up against this government building an army, a national standing army, in direct contravention of the Constitution of the United States of America. And that is what I swore an oath to. Not to a president. Are you aware, ladies and gentlemen, that the military today who takes an oath does not take an oath to the Constitution? They take an oath to follow the orders of the commander-in-chief, the president. And in this case, that is Barack Hussein, insane Obama. I can give you the names of dozens of generals who have come out, and they're never getting mainstream coverage. They've come out and said, something is desperately, horribly, criminally wrong here. listening these are men who have spent their lives watching their back growing eyes in the back of their head being situationally aware being combat aware being politically aware and we're ignoring their warnings It's not just about the rules of engagement in Afghanistan. While they're simultaneously signing away our rights to defend ourselves and for our soldiers to defend themselves in Afghanistan, they're stripping you of your rights to defend yourself at home. They're passing, passing onerous regulations. They're about to give the EPA control over all water. They have done everything in, in their power short of constitutional burning to strip you of your Second Amendment right to defend your home and your family and your community and your town and your county and your state and your federal government against tyranny. Colonel Ken Allen, call me crazy. But what on earth is the point of remaining under these rules of engagement, much, much less subjecting American soldiers to another set of restrictions that make sense only in proportion to your distance from the combat zone? In other words, listen, these guys aren't in some white tower somewhere far away in Washington, D.C., where they're drinking $9 lattes and eating $32 salads for lunch. From there, it makes perfect sense. These guys are operating in a threat environment where bullets are actually flying. Blood is really flowing. Not video game blood. The blood of them and their friends. This is... treason because the president has an obligation as the commander in chief to not aid and abet the enemy 
but to protect and defend his own troops first and foremost and not give the enemy an edge. And the edge that he's about to give them is U.S. forces shall not enter Afghan homes for the purposes of military operations, except under extraordinary circumstances involving urgent risk to life and limb of U.S. nationals. Ryan Zink, commander of SEAL Team 6, says about this issue, the first people who are going to look at it and, re- and review it are the enemy we are trying to fight. It's going to be a document that can be used effectively against us. This is where we either fight or go home. We're losing our ability to fight overseas. We're losing our ability to fight at home too, ladies and gentlemen. What they're trying to pass here by restricting your right to own a plastic firearm. And if, you're, if you haven't already made a call from a previous uh, episode earlier this morning about the Senate and, and the House trying to pass a bill to restrict plastic firearms, that's a clear violation of the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment doesn't say you can own a firearm as long as it's not plastic. It's an act of treason. I've had people say to me, boy, you use that word an awful lot. And my response is always the same. You don't use it enough. This nation should have that word on the tip of every tongue of every American citizen. The entire kibosh in Washington, D.C., and most of your state capitals are operating in blatant, open, undisguised treason. I know people don't like to hear that, but it doesn't make it less true. I know people don't want to acknowledge it, but it doesn't make it untrue. I know people don't want to take it that far, but it doesn't make it untrue. Your discomfort with it is because once you acknowledge it and you are no longer in denial, you must take some kind of action. And that's why you don't want to admit it. That's why America is afraid to use that word. And that is the truth. All right. Before I close out, I want you to get your pen and paper ready. The battery station is doing their annual troop drive for the 1-8 Cav. They're stationed in Afghanistan. It's D Company, 1-8 Cavalry. Um, They need stuff that they can get to these guys. The battery station is at 303 Washington Avenue, and that's in West Plains, Missouri. 65775. That's 303 Washington Avenue. 303. uh, I'm sorry, 303 Washington Avenue. West Plains, Missouri. 65775. The email to get at at information and to ask what they need is troops, T R O O P S, at batterystation.com. The website is batterystation.com. The phone number is 417 257 7799. They need baby wipes and foil packs of food and things like that. You can jump onto their website. You can call over there, ask them what they need. If, they, if you can donate money, they pay for all of this out of their pocket every year. This is, I think, their eighth year doing this. I encourage you, please, America, to stand up and support our troops in any way that you can. And, and this is one way that you can do so where there's literally, I mean, look, you know, bypass some other piece of junk you were going to buy on Cyber Week. And donate 50 or 100 bucks to that cause. That's a real legitimate one, right? Somebody needs that information or that, that product. These are guys that don't take showers for weeks and months on end. Okay, 
You can find us by going to americasvoicenow.org, facebook.com forward slash americasvoicenow, and youtube.com forward slash americasvoicenow. You can email me about this or any other topic that you like that I do on, on this program or any other question that you have at mike at americasvoicenow.org. I want your feedback. I want your input. Good, bad, crazy, not crazy, not bad enough, not hard enough. Tell me what you think. I want to hear it, but I want you to use critical thinking skills.